a bunch of security tips, GPT takes the bar, a new tool for synchronizing type definitions, and a pick of the week for weather nerds. All that and more on this episode of The Download. Welcome back to another episode of The Download. I'm your host, Christina Warren, Senior Developer Advocate at GitHub. And this is the show where we cover the latest developer news and open source projects. Please go ahead and like and subscribe. So my shirt this week is not a shirt, but a jumpsuit. And that kind of makes me look like an Android robot, or so I've been told. I've also been told it makes me look like a superhero. I love it. Look, I like this. I haven't worn it in like two years. I wanted to wear it. Give me your suggestions for what shirts you want to see me wear in the comments down below, and I may or may not take them. We'll see. All right, let's get into the news. So the new year is a great time to reassess your security practices and security hygiene. So I've got a couple of stories that highlight some ways that you can protect yourself and your code. So the first one is a fantastic blog post on the GitHub blog from Chris Reddington, and it talks about passwordless deployments to the cloud. So having passwords or secrets exposed in your code is a nightmare for all of us. Uh, and even with, with code scanning features, it's just something that isn't good for anyone because you have to go through a lot of effort to get rid of anything that's exposed. So what if you could deploy to your cloud provider without having to bother with passwords at all? That'd be pretty cool, right? Well, that's the idea behind Chris's post, which explores, in his words, how you can use OpenID Connect to trust your cloud provider, which will enable you to deploy easily, securely, and safely while minimizing the operational overhead associated with secrets, you know, like key rotations. So the whole post is worth a read. It opens up some great possibilities for using OpenID Connect and GitHub Actions to deploy to your cloud provider without passwords. And, and as I said, like that makes things like secrets and key rotations even easier. I've got a link to the post in the show notes and the description down below, but I really love this idea. Uh, great job, Chris. And of course, leaked secrets or passwords aren't the only things you need to worry about. Having known vulnerabilities in your code is a problem too. But on that side, GitHub has a brand new setup option for code scanning dubbed default setup. And uh, this is a way for you to automatically enable code scanning on your repository. So right now, out of the box, it's gonna work with Python, JavaScript, and Ruby repositories. And it's a way to enable code scanning in just a couple of clicks, so you don't have to bother using a YAML file like you did in the past. The team is working on making this available for all the languages that are supported by the, Q the CodeQL engine, and we'll be rolling um, out support for those languages based on popularity over the next six months or so. So we've got details on how to set this up and more in in the uh, show notes in the description down below. And speaking of code scans, I wanted to give a shout out to Django developer Tom Forbes, who scanned every single package of PyPy, the Python package manager, and he actually found 57 live AWS keys. Yikes. So I've got a link to Tom's blog post in the show notes down below, and he actually created a tool in Rust to scan PyPy, put it on GitHub, and it'll periodically run a GitHub action that will scan PyPy, HexPM, uh, and Ruby gems for AWS keys, and then if it finds one, it'll um, it generate a report and commit it to the repository. It's a really cool proof of concept, uh, but what I really appreciated was Tom's analysis of the types of keys that he found. And on that note, I just want to remind everyone that GitHub now allows you to track any leaked secrets in your public repositories for free um, using secret scanning alerts to track an action on, on you know, leaked secrets directly within GitHub. So I've got a link to Tom's blog post and his tool in the show notes in the description, as well as a link to the announcement um, about the free secret scanning uh, feature for all public repositories on GitHub. Moving on to some AI news, Michael Bomarito and Daniel Martin Katz have pre-published a paper with the audacious, but I will say brilliant title, GPT takes the bar exam. And they look at how well GPT 3.5 does on the multiple choice questions for the bar exam. And if you're not familiar, in the United States, almost every jurisdiction requires that a lawyer pass a license exam, and, and that's known as the bar. And they need to pass that before they can practice law. Okay, so how did AI do? Well, the good news for the lawyers is that AI isn't sentient yet, although, and this is what's pretty exciting, it did do better than random selection by a significant margin, and it came close to human test takers in a couple of categories. Uh, I've got a link to the GitHub repo that has um, a link to the paper, the Jupyter Notebook um, that has the, the results, prompt examples, and session log. Um, and I've got that in the show notes in the description. It's worth reading the entire paper because there are a lot of caveats about how this works. 
But the results are really exciting. Um, there's also been a story floating around about a company that's offering to pay anybody who argues in front of the Supreme Court with their AI lawyer a million dollars, but honestly, that's a publicity stunt, and I don't really think we should discuss it. I just did. Okay. Moving on to some cool project news, I want to introduce a new feature we're calling Project Spotlight, where I highlight cool and interesting projects on GitHub. And the first one that I want to point out is TypeShare, and this is from our friends at 1Password. And like a lot of services, 1Password has code in a lot of different languages, and that can make managing and synchronizing types a hassle. So 1Password created TypeShare, and they dubbed this the ultimate tool for synchronizing your type definitions between Rust and other languages for seamless FFI. And FFI, if you're not familiar with that term, it means foreign function interface, and it's a way that a program written in one programming language can call routines or make use of services written in another. Thank you very much to Wikipedia for that succinct definition. Uh, TypeShare right now works with Kotlin, Swift, TypeScript, and there is experimental support for Go. I've got a link in uh, the, uh, to, to the project in the show notes in the description, as well as a book that 1Password wrote about it, basically the documentation, and a post that they wrote in November when they announced uh, the release to the world. This is really, really great stuff. And now it's time for my pick of the week. So there used to be a really great website and mobile app called Dark Sky that offered really accurate predictions on near time weather updates. So you could find out with very good accuracy if it would be raining in your area in the next hour or so and, and by how much. Well, a few years ago, Apple acquired Dark Sky and they sunset the API recently. And the sad side effect of the API shutdown was that a lot of projects, especially smaller personal projects that had relied on Dark Sky, stopped working. Well, this is where Alexander Ray stepped in, and this is so cool. Uh, while he was working on his PhD, he became really familiar with the, the NOAA uh, weather data set, and he was also relying on Dark Sky's API for a project. So he recreated the Dark Sky API and created something that he calls Pirate Weather. And it's a drop in replacement for the Dark Sky API, so it uses the same public data set that Dark Sky used, and you can basically just replace the Dark Sky API call with Pirate Weather. Now, why is it called Pirate Weather? Well, Alexander thought that the HRRR uh, data set sounded like R Arr. in pirate terms, so that's pretty cute. Anyway, I've got a link to the Pirate Weather uh, website, GitHub repo, and Alexander's GitHub sponsors page in the show notes in the description. Really, really great work with this. Well, that's gonna do it for me. If um, you like this episode, go ahead and give us a like on YouTube. It helps us out. And let me know in the comments any of your thoughts on, you know, uh, Dark Sky or Type uh, Share or, you know, is, is, is GPT going to take over the world? Will the, lo will the robot lawyers take us all on? I'm, I'm kind of into it. Uh, anyway, let us know that in the comments down below. And while you're there, go ahead and subscribe to the GitHub YouTube channel for all of your nerd needs. See you next time.